Now that the lease has been signed and the tenant has given uh, you your security deposit check and your first month's rent check, um, there's a couple things that you may want to consider moving forward. So there's going to be a gap in time between um, usually when everything is signed and when the tenant is to move in. That could be a week, it could be a month, it could be a couple of months. So there's going to be a period of time in there between when everything is signed and the money is given over uh, and, and then until when the tenant is actually going to take occupancy. So there's a couple of things you're going to want to um, address. You're going to want to decide on future rent payments. How do you want to be paid? Do you want the tenant to send you Venmo or Zelle payments electronically? Do you want direct deposit to your bank account? Do you want checks mailed? Um, if so, that should be communicated to the tenant. I always recommend after the lease is signed and after the checks are given for the landlord and the tenant to actually speak on the phone. They change, we, we, the agents will provide the information and they should set up a call to have this discussion and provide the information on um, how do they want to be contacted? Uh, that's more importantly, how do they want to be reached if there's a problem? So the landlord should give them their contact information, their email address if they want to provide that, their name, best numbers to reach them, same with the tenant. Um, and then they should discuss how they want the rent payments to be issued, paid moving forward um, after the initial payment. Um, I would say now about 75% of people do electronic payments in some form. Um, also, the landlord... If you have a tenant currently living in the apartment who's going to be moving out, um, to avoid a conflict with your new tenant moving in, you're going to want to figure out how is the apartment going to be cleaned prior to the new tenant taking over. Who is arranging that cleaning? Who's paying for that cleaning? Uh, get it scheduled because cleaners are, are, are tough to schedule, especially at the end of the month or the beginning of the month um, because they're booked up with a lot of cleanings of people looking to move. So I recommend getting ahead of that and making sure the apartment is delivered in a clean condition. Also, does anything have to be addressed inside the apartment prior to the new tenant moving in? For example, is something leaking? Does something need to be painted? Does the apartment need to be painted? Does the uh, bathroom tub need to be caulked? Um, Usually what happens is uh, landlords I work with will go into the apartment prior to the new tenant moving in, take a look, get their handyman involved. If you don't have a handyman, as an agent, I have several I usually recommend um, who will go in and do all these fixes. Um, so these are things that you should consider that need to be addressed between the time the lease is signed to the time that the new tenant takes over. Um, also, how is the utility exchange being handled? Um, usually the tenant is paying the utilities, at least the electric. They should be provided with the PSC and G information or whoever the utility provider is so that the new tenant can set up their utilities the day that they move in. Also, how is the key exchange being handled? Some landlords like to deal that, deal that directly with the tenant, whether they're giving them the keys the first day, they're meeting up with them at some point, or they're saying, no, let my agent handle the key exchange. And if so, how is it being handled? Are we going to be getting the keys from your previous tenant? Are we going to, are the keys being left at the real estate office? Is there going to be a lockbox in, installed for them to pick it up? So, um, I see a lot of confusion regarding key exchange. So it's good to get ahead of that. So everyone's on the same page as far as how are the keys being handled and how is the tenant picking them up and when are they picking them up? Um, also, uh, you're going to want to, if you're living in the apartment that you're renting out, you're going to want to probably provide the tenant with your current address, uh, your new address, so that if there's any mail received, they could send it off to you or let you know to come pick it up. Um, also, I do recommend updating all your online accounts if you're living in the apartment you're renting out with your new Amazon address, updating Amazon with your address or any other online sites that you have where things or packages are sent to you um, so that you don't get packages still at your old address. Happens all the time. Also, uh, you could do mail forwarding through the United States Postal Service. You can do that online. Usually takes about two weeks to go into effect so that the mail stops coming to your current address and goes to the new address. If you're, if you're renting an apartment out where the current tenant is living in the apartment and you have a new tenant living in, I do recommend telling your current tenant, hey, do the change of address, change your Amazon accounts. Otherwise, packages will keep arriving. This happens all the time. Um, so I do recommend getting ahead of that. Um, also, I recommend keeping all your lease documents together, copies of your checks, et cetera, together in a file for your, your accountant for tax reasons. Um, and also putting a note in your schedule 
for when the lease renewal is to be issued. So if uh, the lease is gonna end say June 30th of 2024, and you're to give 90 days notice um, to the tenant of the new lease terms, you're going to want to then give notice, uh, let's see if it's June 30th, all of June, all of May, all of April. So the end of March, you're gonna wanna put a note, a, um, a note in your calendar to say, reach out to tenant at 123 Main Street for lease renewal terms. Um, then I would put a note in on when that tenant in the lease is to respond back to you with, are you accepting those, are they accepting the lease, return, lease terms or are they rejecting them and giving you notice to leave? Um, so if it's two weeks later, put that note in your calendar for two weeks later. That way you stay on top of these dates. So many landlords forget about these dates and then they have like a month to go. They give notice. There's a month left in the lease and then the tenant's like, I'm leaving. And it's kind of on the landlord at that point because they didn't follow the proper notice period for the lease. Um, you want to provide yourself with enough, enough room to rent out the apartment to another tenant. And I always recommend at least 60 days before uh, the, the lease is to end coming on the market. So if your tenant's like, I'm leaving, um, you put that property on the market, you know, uh, April 1st, May 1st, so that you know by the end of June, uh, you have a tenant lined up. Um, if you have any questions about this, please let me know. Also, um, you're going to want to, if you're going to propose new rent terms next year, or whenever the lease is coming due, you're going to want to consult with your landlord, your your agent regarding what's the rental market price is looking like. And also, um, if you're in a town uh, regarding rent control, you're going to probably want to check those, uh, the rent control uh, allowances for how much legally you can increase your rent uh, in the next term. And that's usually decided upon um, in that period of time, the notice of renewal, um, you're going to want to contact that, you know, for example, Hoboken, Hoboken's rent leveling office and say, I'm a landlord. It's currently rented. How much of a legal increase can I pass along? Um, if you have any questions about this, please let me know. I will, I will link some information down below as far as like uh, mail forwarding and um, the rent control information. Uh, I can be reached at Walter at livingonthehudson.com or at 347-448-3766. Thank you.